Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Gabe Morenci, who's here to break down the return of the UFC. This is Saturday night, UFC 249. What's up, Gabe? Good to see you, Greg. Great to have the fights back. Let's rock. Absolutely, and let's begin with our main event. That's Tony Ferguson in charge. He's the number one contender for the lightweight interim title. And he is somebody that you are banking on as a favorite. Why do you like Tony Ferguson here? Well, you know, it's hard to get in front of a guy that hasn't lost a fight um, since the Oklahoma City Thunder were playing the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. Uh, you have to go back uh, that far, guys. And in fact, it's hard to believe, actually, that the New York Giants actually won a Super Bowl that it was only eight years ago. Uh, but think about that. The last time Tony Ferguson lost a fight was 2012. 2012, the New York Giants beat the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. The Miami Heat uh, beat a very young Kevin Durant and a young Russell Westbrook and the Oklahoma City Thunder. So a lot of things have happened. Unfortunately, another thing that happened in 2012, uh, Call Me Maybe uh, became a thing. Um, that song actually was released at a big hit in 2012. So you get where I'm going with this. As a betting man, I just don't want to get in front of a guy that's, um, that's won 12 fights in a row and it hasn't lost since 2012. Now, his critics will tell you that who has he beaten? Number one, who has he beaten? He hasn't beaten a, uh, a role of champions like some fighters have faced. That is true. Other people will tell you that he's very hittable. That is true uh, as well. Listen, there's a lot of hype about Justin Gaethje coming in here. Uh, he's got 18 of his 21 uh, wins or via knockout, uh, Greg. Uh, the guy's a headhunter. He's a phone booth type of fighter, which means he's going to step into the middle of the octagon, and he's going to want to bang. Now, Tony Ferguson likes punishment. Um, you know, when you speak, when you, when you hear fighters, you talk to fighters that fought him, uh, they say the same thing after, that he almost enjoys pain, like for real, and he likes to basically outsuffer you and prove that he can outsuffer you. It's a dangerous way to fight against a headhunter like Gaethje, uh, but Tony Ferguson is so dynamic, he's so versed, he's good at everything, and he's so relentless. Another thing is, too, Gaethje's been to the fourth round before, but just once with Poirier. For the most part, his fights end in the first round. The deeper this fight goes, to me, it's more of an advantage for Tony Ferguson. Ferguson trained for Khabib, but he's had enough time to readjust right now for Justin Gaethje. I just don't want to get in front of a guy that hasn't lost uh, in eight years right now. I'll, I'll lay the price. And I'll tell you what, uh, the money keeps coming in on Gaethje right now. So if you like Ferguson, I think well, you, know, you should probably wait until the last possible second to pull the trigger because it seems like everyone's betting on the underdogs on this card. But I like the favorite. I like Ferguson. Justin Gaethje, the popular bet right now. Tony Ferguson, according to Gabe Morenci, he's the smart bet. Hasn't lost in eight years. And although he's been training for Khabib, he's in a good spot to claim the lightweight interim title on Saturday night. Let's move on to another title bout. That's Henry Cejudo taking on Dominic Cruz. It's a bantamweight title fight. And Gabe, you and I were talking earlier. Some people believe that Henry Cejudo is the best fighter in the world. You're putting your money on that. You know, I've never been a big Henry Cejudo fan. He tries too hard um, online. And, you know, he's, he's a big, he's an internet troller, uh, actually, but he can back it up. And we're talking about a guy that's an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, he's an Olympic champion. He won a gold medal in the Olympics, U.S. Uh, US Olympian uh, wrestler. And he's also a guy that's held belts in two classes uh, in the UFC. So his pedigree is really second to none. Now, a lot of people regard Khabib to be the best fighter in the world. John Jones, John Jones, you can argue, is maybe the best of all time, but because of the sideshow and all the issues with John Jones, it's hard to give him credit for being the best when Khabib, you know, doesn't get suspended and arrested uh, every six months, although he has been suspended uh, before. But that's besides the point. Um, so who knows that good, all right? Dominic Cruz used to be that good. Dominic Cruz is one of the best fighters in mixed martial arts history. He's one of the smartest fighters in MMA history. He's a great television analyst. Dominic Cruz is going to know what to do and what not to do against Henry Cejudo. The problem is Cruz is 35 years old. He hasn't fought in 41 months. He hasn't won a fight in 48 months, which is four years. And you know, even though Dominic Cruz, this is the problem with Cruz, great fighter, but he's had multiple surgeries. And you know, he's had multiple surgeries, hips, knees, and it slowed him down. One thing with Cruz, though, is he's very good at not fighting for a couple of years and coming back. There's no cage rust with this guy. Like, he actually uses it to his advantage where he's refreshed. And 
There's a lot of talk about Cruz being old. He's not really all that old. He's 35 and Cejudo's 33. But the difference is it's inevitable. It's inevitable. You cannot stop um, Henry Cejudo from taking you down. He's a world-class wrestler. Nobody has the wrestling pedigree in mixed martial arts that this guy does. And, oh, yeah, he's added a, he's added a vicious stand-up and striking uh, attack to his game as well. It's interesting. A lot of people are buying into Dominic Cruz right now as well. These countdown shows do a good job of swaying the line, uh, but you're getting a value pick here. Dominic Cruz will make a fight of it. He'll look good. And, um, you know, it's going to be impressive for a 35-year-old that hasn't fought in basically four years. But ultimately, Henry Cejudo at minus 210 is a value bet, believe it or not. Give me the gold medal champion. Cruz will look good. Cejudo will be better. The better fighter, the better wrestler. It's Henry Cejudo, one of the best fighters in the world. He'll get the job done, according to Gabe, on Saturday night. Let's move on to the prelims, Gabe, where two names that everybody knows. It's Anthony Pettis taking on Donald Cerrone here. The Cowboy in this welterweight bout. Uh, Anthony Pettis is the number 15th ranked fighter in this division. Cerrone is the number six fighter here. You're going with Anthony Pettis. How come? Well, it's interesting you mentioned the weight class of this. Um, you know, Pettis going up to a buck 70 here. They both sort of bounced around from 155 and 170. And I don't. I think Pettis was at his best at 155. Now, Anthony Pettis is an interesting guy. Somebody that, you know, had the ESPN Sports Center highlight of the year uh, with a, uh, a, uh, a fence kick in which he jumped off the fence and kicked ben Sen uh, Benson Henderson in the head. And it was like the highlight, the, the kick of the century uh, type of stuff. The, you know, the kid ended up winning a championship and he ended up on a Wheaties box, literally and figuratively. He's on a Wheaties box. And last couple of years, he's been on the side of a milk carton uh, because um, his, his success has been AWOL and has been missing. Two fighters here. Cowboy Cerrone's, you know, coming to the end of the line here. Um, he made some nice money when he fought against um, against Conor McGregor in the return. And the thing with Cowboy is, he really is a cowboy. Like, he rides horses, ATVs. You know, he climbs, um, he climbs, you know, mountains. And he really is an outdoor, you know, active person. So he's a type of guy who doesn't live in mansions and stuff. So he's just sort of stockpiling money. And you can sort of tell with Cowboy Cerrone whether it's a money fight or whether it's a fight that, yeah, yeah, I'm going to win this fight. I'm, I'm not playing around here. I'm going to win. Or it's like, wink, wink, I'm cashing a check uh, today. He's going to want to win this fight. He was called out after. It wasn't a very good performance. It was an embarrassing performance for him, even though it's against Conor McGregor. He's lost three fights in a row. Yet the thing is with Cowboy, he's, you know, he's been fighting murders. And, you know, he fought a guy like Justin Gaethje. So... Anthony Pettis is sort of an underachiever, but they fought before in 2013. I know it was a while ago, but Anthony Pettis beat him. And Cowboy Cerrone said he basically kicked the liver out of my body. And Cowboy Cerrone's a little bit vulnerable to body shots, and he's also vulnerable to people that are just going to attack him. It's a style makes fights fight and pick for me. And once again, I think I might be in a minority here. A lot of people, a lot of smart people I respect, like Cowboy, but I'm going to take the kid from Milwaukee and Anthony Pettis uh, styles make fights. I think it's a good matchup for Anthony Pettis. I think he beats him for the second time, Greg. Lay the uh, 44 cents with uh, with AP. As Gabe mentioned, these two fighters did do battle back in 2013. It's a long time ago. The fighters have changed. The result will not, according to Gabe. Anthony Pettis gets the job done again. Let's stay right here on the prelims. Let's move on to a, uh, a women's bout here. It's a women's strawweight bout where Carla Esparza is taking on Michelle Waterson here in this one. Gabe, we've been waiting for you to pick an upset. This is where you'll do it. Yeah, I finally have an underdog uh, here. And there are a couple of other underdogs I was taking a look at. Uriah Hall could be worth a shot uh, as well against Jackeray. But as far as uh, Waterson and Esparza is concerned, I've, I've done a pretty good job over the years of, of reading Carla Esparza and... This is an interesting fight in the sense it's kind of cliche when you hear people talk about, well, it's a wrestler versus a striker. This really is your classic wrestler versus sort of karate. Um, you know, Watterson is known as the karate hottie, kickboxer karate style uh, versus a sheer wrestler. Carlos Esparza, very similar to Cejudo, you know, smaller weight class, you know, started to add some stand-up to her game right now. I just think Michelle Watterson is more of a well-rounded a fighter than Aspars is. She's um, the level of competition that Waterson has faced. Um, you know, I think it, it has prepared her for this fight. It's going to be tough. Like 
this is going to be an interesting fight. If, if Sparks is able to take her down, then it's, we're going to be in trouble with this pick uh, because she's just going to rinse and repeat it. And it might not be the most exciting fight uh, that, but Sparks is going to have success. But I think Waterson is going to be, be able to do enough to keep her distance, get in and out, rack up enough points. This fight's going to go the distance. I've got Waterson pulling off the upset uh, here. Uh, give me, uh, give me the karate hottie at uh, plus 136. Going with the upset here with Watterson, uh, having the ability to take her down. We'll see what happens, of course, Saturday night, but it's an upset, small upset, but we'll take Watterson here in this bout. Moving on to the early prelims, tell me, Gabe, what you know about Bryce Mitchell and Charles Rosa in this featherweight contest. This is another fun uh, fight here. Bryce Mitchell might be the uh, the best uh, or the, a 12-0 fighter professional that you've never really heard of. Um, nobody really knows much about uh, this kid. You know, he's he's out there, all right? And not every MMA fighter, in the old days, they used to sort of be more just sort of fighters. Now there's a lot of athletes, guys that went to college and they wrestled and et cetera. Not every guy is just sort of a, um, you know, old school brawler. Uh, Mitchell is. I mean, this kid lives in the woods in Arkansas. He's been training by chasing rabbits and annoy I eating them after the fact. Um, he believes that uh, the COVID uh, and coronavirus is a, a vast government conspiracy uh, to seize everybody's guns and uh, that it was, uh, you know, made in a lab. And if you, we can get deeper, actually, all right? So you get where I'm going with this. Um, but this is a type of guy that won't be affected uh, by a travel. Number one, he's Arkansas, Florida, not much of a travel. But a lot of these fighters' camps uh, weren't as orthodox as normal, Greg. Either their gyms were closed, they didn't have the same training partners they normally do. There's a lot of old-school Mr. T training going on here for this car. You know what I mean? Guys alone in their backyard, guys, like, going old-school training, hitting bags and stuff. And I think just Mitchell's ready to fight. He's not worried about the virus. He's not concerned. He's ready to go. And he's fighting an inconsistent fighter in Rosa. Rosa's a good fighter. Uh, but I, I just like Mitchell in this spot. I think it's a fair price at minus 158. As you mentioned, Bryce Mitchell comes into this one at 12-0. We think he goes to 13-0. He's trading in the woods by himself. This is perfect. Perfect opportunity for him to pick up another victory. One more match we want to get into here. One more fight, I should say. And that's the heavyweight bout on this main card. And you don't necessarily, Gabe, want to pick a winner, but you do want to talk about the length that this fight will go. Well, you know, I do think Nagano is going to win the fight. All right? I do believe Nagano is going to win the fight. And we can start to put together some parlays for you. You can parlay Nagano and Verdum and make money. Uh, you can parlay a Tony Ferguson, Henry Cejudo, and Fabricio Verdum. Parlay at plus 203 at FanDuel uh, as well. So there's different ways to approach this, guys. These are the picks that I like, and you can mix and match a little bit uh, with the parlays. But I'm not going to give you a minus 300 favorite uh, to win a fight. Nagano is going to win this fight. Jaron Zeno Rosenstruck's an interesting fighter. 10-0, uh, and 0, but he's, he's really fought a lot of just sort of tomato cans, uh, as we call them. You know, some of his wins, you know, are against suspect uh, opponents. Now, Alistair Overeem was a real opponent, and it was... The kid dug down deep, and he found a way to win a fight against a real tough fighter in Overeem. Naganu's next level, though. Naganu, Greg, broke the, uh, the Guinness Book of World Records, okay, for the strongest punch ever documented. He fought for the championship a couple of years ago against uh, Stipe Miocic, and, and he, you know, he didn't look good. He was outclassed. He wasn't ready for, you know, he was knocking out a bunch of sort of average guys. He got catapulted because he's impressive, and he has these heavy hands. He's impressive looking. He was outclassed. A lot of times, the guys will lose a fight, and it'll help them. You have to learn to lose before you know how to win, uh, Steven Tyler and Dream On uh, stated, and it's true, especially in a fight game. But he followed that up with another lethargic uh, loss to, to Derek Lewis. And people wondered, what's going on with Nagano here? Was he just hyped? Is he, you know, does, has it passed? Has he passed his peak? No, he's starting to put it together right now, three consecutive wins. The guy's uh, vicious. But Rosenstruck is a tough guy. He can absorb a couple of shots. And the thing is, when you get, and the, the total here is one and a half rounds, guys. When you get two headhunters like this and you get heavyweights like this, the odds makers don't really have a choice. They can't make the total two and a half. Somebody is eventually going to get knocked out in this fight. This fight isn't going to go the distance. But at the same point in time, uh, styles make fights. And when you have two dudes that both know, the only way I lose here is if I get stupid and get punched in the face. And a lot of these heavyweight guys will try to sort of wear the other guy out, Greg. You know, they'll try to show, you know what, I'm in better shape than you. So I'm going to sort of dance around and, you know, I'm, I'm not just going to slug. I'm going to make you get tired. A lot of the heavyweights aren't in the best shape. They're bigger dudes. 
and then they sort of come in for the kill. I think that's going to be an instance here. It's almost like you have two killer, you know, alligators, and they're sizing each other up. I'm going to roll the dice here that this fight goes over one and a half rounds, and we cash the over at uh, minus 110. I think Nagano is eventually going to finish him, but I'll take my chance uh, that uh, Rose's true can last seven and a half minutes. Two big dudes going at it here, but like you said, they both know what the game plan is. The only way you lose, you knock somebody out. And hopefully that knockout takes place after the first round. Gabe Morenci, we appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, great to have uh, fights uh, back. And yeah, don't forget, guys, there's actually three fight cards uh, coming up in the next uh, week after this uh, Saturday night card in Jacksonville. So sports are coming back, baby. Great to have them back. Absolutely. The UFC is back this first card Saturday night. UFC 249, you're not going to want to miss it. For Gabe Morenci, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up. Stay safe, everybody.